Hello guys and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included with another little automation to improve your base. Now I'm gonna talk about something that is often underestimated in Oxygen Not Included. As you can see Frankie is very happy to work uh, when <laughs> basically he is covered in light. As you can see also in the light overlay. Uh, he is using this egg cracker when he is performing the task uh, in light and you can also see that uh, in his stats okay come on front you can see he receives a buff of plus 15 percent work speed when his workspace is actually lit up so and there's a lot of uh, yeah stations and workplaces and so on you can make use of that but specifically interesting to me uh, sounds the metal refinery because it's one of the biggest consumers uh, in the game. It consumes like uh, 1200 watts. And what I'm asking myself, is there actually a difference on how fast uh, du duplicants perform any refining task? So for that I have set up two metal refineries here. They are completely separate from each other. And also I've got <laughs> two pretty much identical uh, duplicants here it took me quite a while because you cannot copy duplicants it seems uh, they both have plus zero for machinery and they also don't have any trait that would affect their uh, operating skills so to say and also I've already dropped a little amount of materials there you can see lime iron and refined carbon and the same amount on the other side as well so what we basically gonna do is uh, produce one piece of steel in every uh, yeah, metal refinery and eventually compare how much energy there has been consumed to perform this task. So as you can see for the moment uh, both metal refineries are connected to the same power grid and there's this dev generator. I'm gonna delete that for now. As you can see now the uh, grids are separated from each other and on both sides we have a jumbo battery filled to the max 40 kilojoules to just spend for refining. So what I'm gonna do now is just open the entries for both duplicants here and let's see if there's gonna be any difference between a lit workspace and yeah, a, do a dark workspace. So I hope the duplicants immediately start work and I'm gonna pause the game once the steel has been generated. As you can see, Max was a little faster, was hard to see. Let's see how much the difference in power there is. As you can see there's zero difference in power. Um, that's something important to know, so basically we are paying the power just to produce one piece of the metal, we are not paying the metal refinery uh, with power over time. So there's no difference on how fast actually a task is being performed. But still it does have certain advantages to have a lit um, workspace and there's a little downside to that. You will pay 10 watts for this ceiling light to operate and if that is running all the time of course that could easily add up if you have got multiple of those in your base. So we are going back to the egg cracker and think of some automation we can actually perform to not in order to not uh, run the egg cracker or let's say the ceiling light of course all the time. So one of the easiest methods would be for instance with a weight plate just at the bottom where the duplicant is gonna uh, perform the work. Uh, select the weight plate here, where is it? There it is. And connect that to the light. And as you can see already the uh, light has been switched off. We also haven't set up any automation so far here. I'm just gonna brush a few more eggs. Um, okay, I'm also gonna clear the floor, of course, on top of the weight plate for now. Uh, yeah, let's just 
brush some X here. Let's see. So basically, every time Frankie is hitting this weight plate, oh, it was at the wrong position, as you can see. So basically, every time he is hitting this weight plate, uh, the light will start working. As you can see, it's a little toilet issue now. Also, we are checking that the current weight is 32 kilograms. That's because there's a little amount of um, super coolant on top now. But believe me, every duplicate has a weight of 30 kilograms exactly. So you only need to set this to above like 29 kilograms or anything. And then, uh, yeah, every time the, there's a duplicate actually working at the station, the, the light will uh, be on, so to say. That's an easy method, but this comes with, with a little downside. As you can see, it could be that some materials actually drop on your weight plate and then the measurement would be incorrect. You could, of course, uh, take, care of that, uh, take care of that with auto sweepers, something like that. But in case you haven't set uh, any auto sweepers in your base there's also another easy me method just gonna remove the uh, weight plate for that and instead we are going to place a duplicate motion sensor you can place this at the bottom but I prefer to just put them at the top as you can see it has a range that is actually being covered so Whenever a duplicate is inside of that range, it will send a red uh, green signal and therefore start the lamp, as you can see here. Also, this has a little wider range. Let's uh, slow down the game for a second. As you can see, now he is out of range, but as soon as Frankie comes into the range, the duplicate motion sensor is sending a green signal and therefore starting the ceiling light and also stopping when he has left the range. So that's a very easy uh, method to automate uh, ceiling lights and depending on how many ceiling lights you have in your base uh, these will save you a lot of power. So I think that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise I would appreciate if you guys consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks and goodbye.